Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare, an online learning community. Boy, it's not very often that I gotta wear a raincoat to come up to the shop. But we're having some lovely spring weather. Luckily, I'm filming this kind of out of order and I've already completed today's project and I'm just coming back into the shop after lunch because the way it's thundering and lightning out there, I'm not sure if the power is going to hold out. And no power means no lights and the video gets awfully dark. But today's project is this candle holder with a heart-shaped base on it. And this, that's going to be kind of disruptive, you know. But compared to the severe drought and the fire ban we were under at this time last year, I'll take the rain. Anyways, this little candle holder is inspired by one that I saw in somebody else's YouTube video. It was not a video about blacksmithing, it was a video about... Well, let's try this again. It was just getting way too noisy in the shop, so I came back in the house. And it is actually the next morning, and it has been raining all night. I think we got a good two inches of rain so far. But back to the topic on hand, this little candle holder that we saw on a Swedish couple's YouTube channel had nothing to do with blacksmithing. They are homesteading, living off grid in Sweden, and they frequently use candlelight to light their home. And he was doing a little segment on one of their videos where this candle holder was just sitting on the table. Had nothing to do with the topic of the video. I don't know if he made it. I don't think he's a blacksmith. Have no idea where it came from. Hopefully whoever made it doesn't mind me borrowing their idea for this video. And I will link to that video right up here, so if you're interested in watching that, you can check that out. And I'll link to their channel at the end of the video. The channel name is Talisbuan, I believe. I'm sure the name is in Swedish, and I'm not really sure exactly how to pronounce it, so hopefully that's close enough. But without further delay, let's take a look at making this heart-shaped candle holder. For today's project, I thought we would start with a piece of half-inch round bar. So that's about 13 millimeter round bar. And this is 18 inches or about 460 millimeters long. This is going to get tapered on the ends. I don't know that it matters exactly how much gets tapered, just something nice and graceful. And those tapers will form the bottom or the pointy end of the heart. For the candle holder, I'm going to start with a piece of 5 8 round bar. So that's about 16, 17 millimeter round bar. This is way too long. This is just a handle so I can get the forge weld where I attach the heart to the bar. And we'll look at that in more detail as we get there. Then I'm gonna draw out the middle of this, leave enough mass to spread the candle cup nice and wide so I can get a nice looking candle cup on there. And I'll cut it off just before I do that spreading. But this way I've just got a nice handle on it. I don't have to use tongs for both pieces as I do the forge weld. And as always, we're going to forge from square to octagon and then round it back up. Since this is mild steel and we're going to be heating it up several more times, I'm going to go ahead and quench this in, and then I can grab it to work the other end. You guessed it, we're going to work it square, octagon, and then round. This is 22 inches long, so I'm going to put a mark at 11 inches. Put just a little dent at the edge of the anvil so I can find it again. Then we're going to fold this in half so I can forge weld it together right at the end. Now 
Now, if you've been working in this fire for a while, this is a great opportunity to clean it out. Make sure you don't have any clinkers. Your forge weld will go easier. But I've only had this fire going for about a half hour today, so I think it's still pretty clean. And we're just going to go ahead and proceed with the forge weld. I will put a little bit of flux on this, though. I am going to switch to a lighter hammer for doing the forge weld. While it's hot, we'll go ahead and forge the scarf. Then we want to put a similar scarf on the end of the 5 8 round bar. Since the 5 8 bar is heavier than I want in the long run, I don't have to upset it to form the scarf. Those should go together like that. Now these two-part welds are often referred to as a drop tongs weld because you have to line up the bottom piece, set the top piece on it to hold it in place, then you drop your tongs, pick up your hammer, and make the weld. You got to do this pretty quickly and efficiently so it pays to rehearse this if you're not real familiar with it. Do this over and over if you need to. This is also a place where this side face comes in quite handy to give me more room to support the piece as I make this weld. Another handy trick is to take a piece of soapstone and mark what's going to be up when you make that weld. So the scarf is up on that one, the scarf has to be down on this one. And that keeps some confusion down. I'm going to put a little bit of flux on this. It's not absolutely required, but it does help some. As these come up near welding heat, if you touch them together as lightly in the fire and they want to stick, you're probably about there. If they don't want to stick in the fire, they're not going to stick at the anvil. Once you have a good weld, you can go to heavier hammer blows and start refining the shape. I'm also going to reduce this to about half inch round at the weld. I think I want to draw this down just a little bit further before I cut it off. I'm going to cut this off using the guillotine tool and these dies for the smithing magician. I think these are available from Blacksmith Supply. There's a link down in the video description for their site. But this leaves a nice clean square cut on the end of the bar.
I want to spread the candle cup portion out using the cross peen of the hammer. Start working in the middle of the bar and work towards one edge as you thin it out. And then go back to the middle and work towards the other edge. You may want to find a drift or some sort of a sizing pin to put inside the candle cup. I just wanted to challenge myself and see what I could do freehand. Next thing I want to do is turn this around and work the part that will be the heart-shaped base. Now on the original one, this is the upper end of the heart. So it starts like this, and then these curve around, and these tapers then form the lower end of the heart. I think you could do it exactly the opposite if you wanted to depending on how you're going to display this. I think if you made this the top end of the heart, you could put a U-shaped bend in this and make a wall hanging candle holder. But I think it balances better the way I saw the original done. I would like to take a moment and thank today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes to choose from. If you're looking for ways to express your creativity, Skillshare has lots of classes to choose from. Classes in drawing, painting, graphic design. If you're a blacksmith looking to sell your product, they have classes in online marketing, product photography, website design. Welcome to our WordPress website for beginners course. This course will teach you how to create a WordPress website from scratch. All sorts of things that will come in quite handy. Personally, I take a lot of classes in video production, video editing, so that hopefully I can present a better video product for you folks watching my videos. So I have found Skillshare to be really beneficial in that regard. Skillshare costs less than $10 a month, and for the first thousand people that use the link in my video description, you can get a free trial offer of Skillshare.
Now the original had a little bit of a bevel to the outside of the heart, so I'm going to go ahead and try and recreate that. Just need to fiddle around with this a little bit and see if I can get the ends to come out even again. That was easier than I thought it might be. Now I just want to make sure this is standing straight up and down. Looks pretty good. But I also would rather have the seam either straight in line this way or straight in line this way just for aesthetic reasons. So I'm going to heat that up and just put a little twist in that. As this cools, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of my usual paste wax finish on here. And I think it's ready to put a candle in and see if it works. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I think this was a really fun project. Some basic forge welding. You got to try a few different things, a little bit of trying to shape this symmetrically. And it's something that I don't think I ever would have thought of. I didn't do any grinding or filing on this joint here. I can't decide if I would like it better if that was perfectly straight or if I like the character of the little bit of irregularity there. I kind of go back and forth. It wouldn't be hard to run a cutoff disc on a die grinder through there and straighten it up. But if I do that, then I can't go back to this. So I'm going to leave it like this for a while. And this is one we're going to use in our house. This one's not going to be for sale. I suppose an alternative way to do this would be to just start with a heavier bar, reduce one end for the candle holder portion and split the other end either with a saw or with a chisel to make the heart portion if you didn't want to do any forge welding. As far as a drip pan goes, it seems like a lot of really old candle holders never had drip pans. Of course, that's back when candles dripped a lot, and now modern dripless candles, you'll almost always see a drip pan on these things. We'll just keep an eye on it, and if it starts to drip, we'll put something under here in use. Not really that big a deal. It's easy to stick a piece of paper under there or something. But I suppose if you wanted a drip pan, you could put a tenon on the end of the bar instead of the candle cup, add a drip pan, add a candle cup, rivet that all together, and that would work. But it wouldn't have the same character in my mind. I do hope you enjoyed the video. Remember, the first thousand people to use that Skillshare link down in my video description get a free trial offer of Skillshare. If you're interested in Talisbuan's channel, I will link to one of their videos right up here and link to their channel down here. And of course, if you want to subscribe to my channel, you can click on this link up here. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop. Be safe. Wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next video.